All right, so I kind of screwed up, and I kind of didn't give you the initial velocity. The reason why I didn't do that is because the way I designed this problem is it's actually a, a part of a bigger problem, and I just gave you the last half, since all the physics you know is really just the projectile motion part. But essentially, in order to calculate the velocity, you're going to have to go through some energy work, and it's actually not that bad. So I'm going to calculate it out for you. I'll show it to you. I'll give you the equation to use. Here's what you got. Um, Essentially, there's two equations that I haven't taught you yet, and it's pretty simple. I'm talking about potential energy equals mgh, and kinetic energy equals um, one half mv squared. You might even be familiar with these two kinds of energy. The reason being is because, um, because I've taught this before in like eighth grade and in ninth grade and all of that kind of stuff. So people have seen these two equations, and that's really it. There, it isn't any like really long one like the ones we've been learning. So essentially what you got yourself here is a little pendulum, right, with a bind. And this is theta, and this is phi. This is r. And it's the same bind, so it's the same length. It's also r. And let's see, if I were to have the bind over here at this stage, it's also r. It's just the same bind at three different stages. Are we cool with that? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right. So, essentially, what I'm saying here is all of the potential energy here translates to kinetic energy over here. Because when you go down, you're going to speed, you're going to not have any kinetic energy, you're not going to be moving. And then you're going to go and speed up and you're going to have maximum kinetic energy. And then some of that kinetic energy is going to be lost. And, but when you let go, all of that kinetic energy that you have really comes from potential energy over here. So essentially, what we need to do is we need to say all of the energy in the beginning equals energy out. So um, the energy in the beginning is only potential energy. The energy in the end is potential energy plus kinetic energy. Remember how I told you if I chose this point, it would be only kinetic energy. But at this point, it's a little bit higher than the lowest point. So you have both. All right, so essentially what we need to figure out is what is H here and what is H here. What I'm going to call this is H1, H2, and let's not leave pansies about it, let's do it. Um, let me see. This says MGH equals H1 on that side. MGH2 plus one-half MV squared. One of the really interesting things you're going to find about energy is that boom, 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 mass counts it out. I actually have my eighth graders taking a test on this right now, and they said, if you go on this swing, and then if Aki Bono, like a 500-pound sumo wrestler, went on this swing, the mass doesn't matter. So, essentially, the same velocity, so you would get that same velocity. Um, what we really want to figure out is, what is these H1s and H2s? Essentially, we want to solve for this V eventually, but we need to figure out what H1 and H2 is. A nice way to do that is actually use trigonometry. Remember how I told you, you guys are going to have to use trigonometry like mad, crazy people. So, the way you figure that out is this. It's kind of a trick. If this length from here to here is the length R, and this length from here to here is the length R, I see a triangle. And this height right here is R here, um, cosine I theta. Gonna steal this? Cool. Because mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a triangle, you've got theta, there's a adjacent side. <laughs> so what is this height? I know from here to here, and I know from here to here. What is this? If I know the big one, and I know the this one, I want to figure out what this one is. Are they the same one? I don't know. If I I know they're not the same. If I know what this is, say this is 10 feet or something, I don't know. Say this is 8 feet, what is this? The other two? Two feet, right? It's just this minus that, right? Yeah. So this, H1, is actually equal to R, the big one, minus R cosine theta. Cool? By the same argument, I would say that this height right here is r minus r cosine phi. Yay? Nay? Yeah. Good? Good? Bad? Ugly? What do you think? All right. So let me pull this up to the top. 
I'm going to rewrite the bottom equation, but this time instead of H1, H2, I'm going to write all of that stuff. So it's G times R minus R cosine theta equals G times R minus R cosine phi. plus one-half V squared. In essence, let me just get rid of all the parentheses real quick. GR minus GR cosine theta equals GR minus GR cosine phi plus one-half V squared. I'm going to take everything except that onto the other side. So it would be GR minus GR cosine phi, theta minus GR plus GR cosine phi equals one half V squared. Yeah? Good? Mm -hmm. Alright, this cancels out with that. Um, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to factor out a G and R. So I really have just GR cosine yeah. phi minus yeah. cosine theta. Oh, you're welcome. Is one half of v squared. Yay? Yeah. All right. Um, so for v squared, right? Kick that guy up. You get a two up here. Take the square root of both sides. There's your answer. So v equals the square root of two g r cosine phi minus cosine theta. Cool. All right. Yeah. And phi is the angle that the angle that you your, the volume was initially at. I had you measure that like, yeah. a bunch of times. I guess I don't. I forgot what the answer was. Um, and so that would be this. Theta happens to also be half of phi. Theta equals one half phi. And you can just figure out the numerical value. So it's basically just plug in the numbers and check it out. Um, one way to check that. One way to check to see if this is a valuable answer, viable answer, is to say, what happens if theta equals phi? What do you think would happen? If, if, you, if you took, you ever, you ever swing on a rope swing? Yeah. All right, so if you started off over here and you kind of went all the way to the very end, what's your velocity at that point, at that point right there? Um, yeah, some... you're Oh, zero? Yeah, exactly. It's zero. So if theta were equal to phi, mm -hmm. your velocity should equal zero. Well, check this out. If I... I'm going to take this and rewrite this equation to g r cosine phi minus cosine theta. If I change this to a phi, this becomes zero. Zero times all of that becomes zero. The square root of zero is zero, so you'd be equal to zero. Uh, that was just my way of checking to see if this equation was somewhat of a viable equation. Mm -hmm. We cool? Yeah. All right. Thanks.